All right, so we got Black Myth Wukong. Now, this is GameSpot's uh, review, so we're going to see what they say about it. We've already checked out IGN's review. Make sure you guys go check out that video, but let's see what, you know, GameSpot says, and let's see, you know, if there's any type of similarities or if there's, like, a whole big gap between what IGN and GameSpot said about Black Myth Wukong. Let's go check it out. Let's go. Black let's go. Going in, I knew not to expect What's up, Richard? How you doing? Richard Melee Melee. The game's Chinese developer, Game Science, has been adamant that it's not a Souls-like, preferring to define oh. it more generically as an action RPG. Oh, so it's not a Souls that game. partially accurate, as Black Myth Wukong is definitely not a Souls-like. What I wasn't oh, okay. expecting was for it to be essentially a lengthy boss rush. It's not uncommon to go from one boss fight into another and then another. And it's in these elaborate battles where Black Myth... I mean, what type Wukong of boss fight. is that? The moments in between, however, aren't quite as strong sometimes devolving into aimless tedium. But its satisfying combat and unique variety of boss fights mostly manages to overcome these flaws. Sorry, y'all. All right, 38 hours played? Oh yeah, they liked it, they liked it. 38 hours played? Yeah, they liked it. They liked it. Black Myth Wukong story is based on the classic Chinese novel Journey to the West. Okay. Originally published in the 16th century during the Ming Dynasty, the epic saga has proven to be incredibly long lasting and influential since its release, inspiring everything from Ninja Theory's Enslaved Odyssey to the West to Akira Toriyama's Dragon Ball manga. Wait, what? Black Myth Wukong's take on the enduring tale is set sometime after the original story, while still retaining many of its characters. Names like Ju Ba Jie and Kang Jin Long and the Demon Ball King will be instantly recognizable to anyone familiar with Journey to the West, even if certain characters' allegiances sometimes differ from the source material. You play as a mute monkey known as the Destined One, who shares uh -oh, the, the Destined One, Sun Wukong, a legendary simian commonly known as the Monkey King. Sun Wukong is a prominent character in Journey to the West, so your unexpected presence is one of the game's central mysteries. Are you the Monkey King reincarnated, or perhaps one of his clones breaking off on your own quest? The answer isn't the most surprising, but it makes for a thrilling conclusion to the adventure. The rest of the game story didn't quite resonate with me. However, it's clear that Game Science had the freedom to deviate from the source material, but I still felt lost when trying to follow every facet of Black Bro, wait, you can turn into an apple in this game? Like, what? It helps that each For of real? the game's six chapters revolves around a relatively self-contained tale, dealing with universal human emotions such as love, hate, and greed. Yet it still feels like a story best experienced by those with intimate knowledge of the source material. Oh, okay. And concepts from that Japan boss looks disgusting, I'm going to be honest with you. frequently flew over my head. So I found it difficult to invest in both the broader picture and more of its intimate yarns. It's a shame because finally seeing a Chinese take on a Chinese story as classic as this one is inherently fascinating. A lot of people have only experienced the story through the lens of another country's adaptation, and it's clearly been treated with a lot of care and attention to detail. There are moments I love, like every encounter you have with a headless monk who serenades you with a sanxian. <laughs> And the character designs are bro where's really your head at like what do, like what am i looking at right now to latch onto if you're bro where's your head like Chinese <laughs> folklore and mythology in general fortunately one of black myth wukong's greatest strengths is how it weaves sun wukong's wondrous abilities into the framework of its fast-paced combat the i agree i agree Ru Yi Jing Gu Bang, i agree magical staff that can shrink and extend at will he can also create clones of himself from a single strand of hair. Finally, I've seen this yesterday. With a point I've seen this yesterday. Shape shift into a vast array of different forms. All of these abilities are represented in the game, expertly showcasing the Monkey King's prodigious combat capability. The Once Monkey King! Off, you'll see it elongate to bludgeon enemies with extra ferocity before reverting back to its original size. You can also make use of various spells that consume mana and Bro, you can freeze them too. You can freeze them in place. Like that was crazy. You can clones of yourself to give enemies more than a single target to focus on. And the use of a magic spell called Immobilize that ooh, lets ooh. you freeze your foes freeze frame. for a few seconds, giving you time to wail on them while they're haplessly trapped or using the opportunity to take a step back and heal. And bro, these bosses, like they, bro, they fight back too. Like it's crazy. As you're able to transform into specific previously defeated enemies and utilize their different movesets and weapons. One of these transformations is called Red Tides which you acquire early on after defeating the giant wolf Guangzhi. By shapeshifting into this ferocious canine, you're able to wield his flaming glaive to inflict burn damage on your opponents as you twirl around and pull off a variety of combos. 
What's more, each transformation has its own health bar. Wait, I didn't even see that. With an extra life. Once this health bar is extinguished, or you've used up all your might by performing various attacks, you transform back into your usual self. Wait, wait, you hear what he just said? So he basically, he just said that if you transform into like, um, like one of these like forms or whatever, it's like an extra life basically. So like the boss can like legit just go absolutely crazy on you or whatever, and then you go right back to your original form, which basically like kept you, it's like a second life. That's crazy. That's nice. I like that a lot. Boss shape. I like I like that. I like the sound of that one. I'm gonna be honest with you. Clones is rewarding. The core of Black Myth Wukong's combat lies in its unusual combo system. Light attacks are essentially a means to build focus points, which are spent to unleash different heavy attacks. With enough upgrades, you can eventually bank up to three of these points at a time, and the game's entire combat economy is built on farming focus and cashing it in as soon as possible to deal significant damage. Light attacks do feel fairly weightless as a result which is further emphasized by the small amount of damage they chip off each boss's health bar. Okay. The game's sense of impact comes from executing a full combo, especially if you're able to transition from a light combo into a heavy finisher. In these moments, your staff begins to glow red hot as uh -oh. it hurtles through the air and collides with an almighty thump. Bro, that These boss is, bro, nasty looking. I'm going to be honest. Oh, my bro, look at the combos he's putting on him, bro. Finding openings and using Immobilize to give you the time to pull off these combos is the basis of Black Myth Wukong's combat. Once you're able to keep a combo going while mixing in dodges and utilizing your bag of tricks, each boss fight becomes a frenetic and exhilarating dance to the death. As an elaborate boss rush, Black Myth Wukong lives and dies on the quality Sorry, of its boss battles, and for the most part, they're excellent. Each of the game's six chapters offers a rogues gallery of thrilling foes to fight. Known as Yao Guai, these mythological beasts range from a giant black bear to a traditional Chinese bear. Bro, I've seen a black bear, bro. I've seen the bear, bro. Many, many more in between. Blocking is not part of your extensive repertoire. Yeah, nah. The only form of parrying is limited to a magic spell on a cooldown timer. So you need to excel at dodging to make it through each fight alive. This might sound intimidating if you don't usually play through action RPGs, but outside of a couple of boss fights in later chapters, the game's difficulty isn't particularly challenging. This is coming from really? a souls like veteran. So my gauge on what's Oh, oh, he said he has souls like veteran. He says he's a souls veteran. Okay. My very first attempt. I still wouldn't say Black Myth Wukong is approachable, however, as its toughest bosses still pose a considerable threat and there aren't any difficulty options. I mean, I hope the they should though. Like, it's challenging moments is just a little more forgiving. Whether Bro, the combos are crazy. Surrounded by snow-capped mountains or sloshing through a shallow pool of blood, these battles against Yao Guai are frequent triumphs. There's a sense of balletic elegance to its best boss fights, mixing martial arts influences with supernatural flair to create these tense and awe-inspiring encounters. You're often challenged to learn attack patterns to nail the timing on dodges and figure out where openings occur so you can get a combo in. But there are also opportunities to be strategic with your abilities too. Immobilize is ineffective against certain bosses, so you might go for a different spell. Or vary okay. your transformations to attack an enemy's elemental weakness. So basically, you can't just spam like you can't just spam like certain like uh like abilities for like you can't just spam it for like certain bosses. You gotta like spam it for like you gotta like uh not spam it, but you gotta like activate certain abilities for certain bosses. That makes sense. All right. Even if I that makes sense. That makes sense. Easy, okay. That I can do that. Away from their thrills. While the toughest among them, I can definitely do that. With a pounding heart and palpable elation, when I finally managed to emerge victorious. The game's ability to produce this sensation is where Black Myth Wukong feels most like a Souls like. There are more obvious similarities, such as a checkpoint system that respawns enemies when you rest, and a flask for healing Wait, what? a finite number of charges and can be refilled at said checkpoints. Yet aside from this, Game Science wasn't lying when it said it wasn't making a Souls like. This is none more obvious than in the game's level design. For the most part, your path through each chapter is linear, albeit with a couple of forks in the road leading to optional bosses and crafting materials used for brewing potions and forging armor. Occasionally, it opens up with more expansive areas, featuring numerous branching paths, but progression is still usually confined Bruh. to a singular route. I do like one thing I love about this game, and like I obviously um, I, I do like how like both GameSpot and IGN they both mention this that bro I love how big this is now. Pause. I love how big the map is. Well, IGN, the I think what was the guy's name from IGN? Oh, Mitchell. Uh, so Mitchell from IGN said that um that like the basically like the game was like that like the like the environment of the game was really nice looking and whatever, but it was like so much land. There was so much like it, it was like some of the land was basically irrelevant. That's what he basically just said. So 
But if I'm being honest with you, bro, I kind of like like I kind of like like uh like the like the extra space. I like that a lot. You know, if it's for me, so I'm actually glad that uh, both IGN and GameSpot talk about that because um like some people might like it, some people will like it. So uh, I mean, you know, it is what it is. So linearity is present even when it doesn't initially appear to be. This isn't inherently bad, but the level design is straightforward and unimaginative. Issues that are further compounded by an abundance of jarring invisible walls. This man running through water, bro. That's crazy. Of the game. Throw in only a smattering of enemies that don't pose much of a threat, and the sections between boss fights feel disappointingly sparse and languid. I also need to mention a moment near the end of the game that stumped me for several hours because the solution is incredibly specific but not at all obvious, especially when there's nothing else like it in the game. Uh -oh. the momentum from the final chapter and had me questioning whether I had encountered a game breaking bug or was just being ignorant. Each environment you explore does at least look fantastic. When you're running through a bamboo forest grove punctuated yep. by falling leaves and dense vegetation or planting your feet on the sun kissed rocks of a craggy canyon, Black Myth Wukong is frequently beautiful. It is. It, it is, bro. It looks amazing. It looks amazing. At the outset to prevent the dreaded Unreal Engine 5 stutter. Black Myth Wukong is an uneven game where the highlights are. Oh, what are they going to give it? It's triumphant boss battles. But this is Predict Predator. Uh, pre blah, 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 blah. Predict rating for GameSpot. Now, IGN gave it an 8. They gave it an 8. I think that GameSpot, I don't know, bro. GameSpot, they might give it. I haven't heard any bad things like so far. They might give it a nine. They might give it a nine, but all right. I think that uh, GameSpot is going to give it an eight as well. Like my mind is saying they're going to give it an eight, but like, bro, out of what I've heard, bro, he didn't say anything negative or whatever. I think, I think they might give it an eight, bro. Comment down below, man. What do you guys think they're going to give it? And um, I think, they're gonna, bro, you know what? They might give it a nine though. Like, bro, I haven't heard anything negative. Like nothing negative. They might give it an eight. I, I think eight. 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 Bland level design. I think eight. Scarcity of enemies will have you clamoring for the next face-off with a deadly yell. Why? I appreciate that it's not just another Souls-like in what is now a crowded genre, and the choice to go for a boss gauntlet is unexpected and honestly quite refreshing. It's disappointing that it falters outside of its cinematic clashes against mighty beasts. But designing this many rousing boss battles while avoiding a sense of fatigue is no mean feat and deserves praise. Told you. I told you. I literally told you. I told you. I told you. What did I tell you? Man, first of all, shout out Richard. Shout out uh, Tamor. Shout out Mac. Shout out everybody from, uh, from GameSpot. Um, so both IGN and GameSpot gave it an 8. Now... Obviously, I haven't played the game yet, but if I'm looking, if I'm judging, or not even judging, but if I'm combining both, um, you know, ratings from, you know, IGN and GameSpot, you know, the reason I, um, the reason I take, because I don't, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't have to take their ratings, right? To be, like, I, I, this is just strictly entertainment or whatever, but I don't have to take their ratings. I'm like, I just got to be completely honest with you, but, but it's nice to have insight and information from people who actually played the game. Uh, especially, you know, they played the game like before the game comes out. So they both said eight. I'm looking at it kind of like, bro, combat wise, bro. Like, it, it, bro, it's absolutely amazing. I think story wise, I don't really think like I'm not expecting like you know I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not expecting like, uh, like a like like just a godly ten out of ten GTA five like story mode or whatever. I'm not expecting like no like you know um. I mean, you know what? I'm expecting, like, some heavy, like, you know, boss introductions or whatever. But if I'm being completely honest with you, bro, um, so far, and this is, like, like a predict or a pre-rating before the game comes out on the 20th, I'm going to give it, I might have to give it an 8 so far as well, bro. It might be 8s across the board. Um, because even though it looks really good, even though, um, you, know, you know, like, the, like the combat's amazing or whatever, um, GameSpot, bro, they actually said this game is, is not a Souls game. I was actually debating this. I'm uh, not debating this. I, I, bro, I don't like the word debate, but um, I was actually talking about this, you know, the other day. I was like, you know, is this game considered like a Souls game? Because, bro, this guy is going up against like all types of bosses and, and, and stuff like that. So, like, 
is it like a Souls game or whatever? Turns out GameSpot's like, nah, this isn't a Souls game. And actually, um, like the actual company who actually made Black Myth Wukong, they're like, no, this isn't a Souls game. This is just an action RPG. So, you know, it, it's not a Souls game. But some people might call it a Souls game or whatever. It is what it is. It, it really don't matter. So, to be honest with you, bro, I might give it an 8, like a pre-date, like a pre-rating uh, before the game comes out. I might give it an 8. Uh, maybe a nine because I'm a little biased. I've been waiting for this game to come out, you know, so far. So comment down below, man. What is your predict rating before the game comes out on the 20th? So, Xavier, come out and.